Well, hey there, guys and gals. Jack here with the final episode of Miyagi Mornings for the week. Uh, so I'm not confused about the number now. It is 95 because it always has to end in a 5 or a 0 until I screw up and don't have a full 5-day week with Miyagi Mornings, which will probably never happen. If there's ever a week I can't do 5, I'll, I'll probably not do them at all that week because my OCD just will not allow that. Anyway... We're going to talk about websites today. We're not going to talk about cryptocurrency, but I I have to at least say, you know, Pirate Chain is now a a billion dollar asset and broke into the top 50. And I told you when it was eight cents to buy it, but you told me it was Tulip Mania or whatever. Yeah, whatever. It's uh, $13.66 right now. And the island of Jackistan is beginning to come into my mental view at some point. Anyway, we're going to talk about making money today, but not with cryptocurrency. Good old-fashioned business, side hustle type stuff, small business, mom and pop level business. And we're going to talk about how a website and domain name fits into that. So somebody in the MeWe uh, thread on this said, you know, basically I have a small business. I don't remember if it was a handyman business or what. Let's just say it was because that's fine. Like it doesn't matter what it is. But it's basically a local business. It's not somebody that is going to be shipping, you know, widgets to Sheboyganville. It'd be if they are in Sheboyganville, they live in Sheboyganville, and they're going to do work in Sheboyganville, that type of thing. So the question was, first of all, do I even need a website? And I don't know that you need one, but you probably should have one, because if I'm looking for Bill's handyman service in Sheboyganville, and I don't know how to get in touch with Bill, but somebody's told me about Bill, or I worked with Bill before, but I lost his number, that type of thing. You know what I'm going to do. I'm going to go to Google, and I'm going to go Bill's Handyman Service, and I'm going to be like, oh, shit, there's a lot of Bill's Handyman Services out there. I don't know which. Bill's Handyman Service, Sheboyganville. Boom, and I, I'm going to expect that I would find you. And then I'm going to find you, and I'm going to contact you and say, hey, I need my gutters cleaned or whatever it is, right? So, yeah, I think you need that. I think you need to make sure you're like, Set up with Google Local and all. And I can't turn this into an online marketing lesson today. That's way too deep uh, to go into in a short video. But you, you do need to learn basic SEO. And while there's not a huge amount of direct effect on the search engines through the what's called the title and description tag, you need to figure out how to do that. And if you're using WordPress, and you should, like all-in-one SEO or Yoast SEO, anything like that will help you be able to do that really easily and kind of give you some guidance on it. And, uh, you know, you need to have, like, then Bill's Handyman Service Sheboyganville, Illinois, if it fits, or IL, or whatever fits in those 60 characters. Sheboyganville's a pretty big word. It's a town I made up out of nowhere, just for the record. And, yeah, I know there's a Sheboygan. Everybody's like, but there is a Sheboygan. I said Sheboyganville. It's a, it's a joke off of uh, an Adam Sandler movie. I believe the town that was created in that one was Westchesterton Fieldville. Anyway, it's just a made-up place. So, yeah, you... You, you, you have to make sure that you're optimized for the things that people look for. Your web domain name. If you can get something really clever and cute that people remember, fine. Those are harder and harder to come by today. You know, if I was Bill's handyman service, and that's what I called myself, and that's what everybody called me, and maybe that wouldn't be the name I'd pick, but if I did, and if I could get billshandymanservice.com, I would do that. It's a really long domain, but it's what people are going to look for in your local market once they're aware of you. And if you have that and basic on-page SEO in such a low competitive term, there's not people trying to do that on purpose, maybe one or two external links into your site, you're going to rank for that. Google, Bing, Yahoo, whatever the hell else people use, you're going you're gonna to rank there. Um, where should you get your domain name? I almost don't care. I really don't care. Like As long as you're not using some scam artist that's charging $50 for a, a basic .com domain or something like that, it, it really doesn't matter. Um, where should you get your hosting? Um, I would consider hosting with HostGator. I really like them for small sites like this. They're inexpensive and they have good support. Bluehost, just about anybody that's that's out there who I wouldn't use. And I would use them for a domain name if, if you know you didn't have another place to do it or whatever. I wouldn't get all hairy about using them for a domain. But GoDaddy. GoDaddy is going to try to sell you on their site builder, and their site builder is effing garbage. It's junk. Do not use it. And then you're going to build your site on GoDaddy, and then you're going to find out like all the little basic SEO shit that you should be able to, be able to do. They're going to lock the search engines out of your site. They're going to lock down your ability to optimize your site, and then they're going to charge you more money to open it up, which is just ignorant and stupid, and you shouldn't do it. 
your website should be built on WordPress. But that's a blogging platform. It can be any kind of website. When you set up a WordPress site, you can say, make this my homepage. You can call it home. You have Bill's Handyman service and basically a homepage and whatever, and about us, a contact us, and any other pages you want. But your website for a small business like this should probably be about four to five pages, a basic kind of little mini online brochure, who you are, how you got started, things like that. You can optimize if you have like an area where you're in like, you know, a town but you're in like town A, but you, know, like you serve town A, town B, town C, town D, et cetera, like you have a coverage area, then each page optimize the main idea of your thing for that town. Because again, it's very, very low competition for that. Again, this is basic SEO. You can teach yourself this in a day. Uh, I, I'm not going to go through a tutorial on it, but that's just one way to think about this. I do think everybody should have a blog. Right, even if there's only four or five posts on it. So when you set your site up, you can have one of your links be blog, and it will be the normal blog feed you see on a website. How I would do it if I were one of these people. Do not let this be part of your toolbox fallacy. Like I can't start building my business till I handle have this. Spend some damn money, get somebody that makes up some basic, simple, decent graphics for you. Put the website together for you. You give them the content, they put it on there. And then you get in the back end of WordPress and start looking shit up on YouTube to figure out how to do the things you need to do. Have them create a page for you that's a blog. Put in a few posts about some things. And then while you're building your presence, so let's say you are a handyman. You build a deck. You should take a picture of it. As long as your customer doesn't have a problem, I take a picture of it. If you build it and then you put rails around it and then you stain it, take a picture through the progress. Put it on, you know... It, whatever your social media is you're using. But the way I would do that, then make a, a post on your blog, add those pictures, a little bit of commentary. This is something you can do like, extremely fast and start building a book of business on your blog. And then instead of putting that on Facebook or MeWe or Float or whatever, put it on your blog and share the post. Keep doing that. Because what's going to happen then is when somebody says to you, well, have you ever done a deck before? Even when you're in real life. Now your website is a sales tool. It is a sales tool that's standalone that talks to a customer you don't know about yet that's a lead, but you're standing in front of a customer and you just did gutters for their house. And they're like, well, we've been thinking about getting a deck. Have you ever done a deck before? As a matter of fact, and start scrolling through your blog. There's a deck, there's a deck, there's a deck. Okay, now you have a track record. You're building your portfolio on your site. Now your site has value. You see how this works, and it doesn't matter what you do. Right. If you have something where you're directly providing a service to customers and they give you testimonials, hey, can I write that down? Can I take a picture of you? Whatever. You know, and here it is. Can I put publish on my site? You can you can log into your blog, do that shit right there on your phone and go, you know, basically save draft and show them what it'll look like. Are you okay with this? Is there anything you want me to change? No? Publish. And you on the fly are building your portfolio. If you, if you sell a product people consume and they really like it and their kids are happy or whatever, take a picture of them eating it, right? If you do, if you do stuff like, if you have a little farm like I do, when you see your ducks doing some crazy shit, take a picture, make a little note, and instead of just throwing that shit on Instagram, throw it on your site. If you want to throw it on Instagram too, I don't care, but put it on your site. Build that thing so that when somebody looks up Bill's Handyman Service or Jack's Duck Farm or whatever, they can see that there's more to it than just your random average crap for paid site. Make sure they can contact you. Do not hate money. Let me say it again. Do not hate money. You should have a great big contact link. And in spite of that, like your phone number or preferred method of contact should be like at the bottom of every page. Every page. Every page. Every freaking page. You don't get any money until somebody says, hey, I want to do business with you. And there are people that this is how they think. They get to your website. Con Screw it. They look for somebody else. It's that fast. It's... I can't figure out how to do business with this person. I'm going elsewhere. I mean, I, I've literally, in mocking websites that I wanted to do business with, I've been on the, like, with my freaking wallet in my hand going, take my money. Take my freaking money. How do I do, bi how do I do this with you? How do I give you money? And then I go, they don't want my money, and I leave. It happens all the time. Make contact and doing business with you easy. Make sure you're building a portfolio on that blog section of your site. 
Use WordPress. If you're not someone that knows how to set up websites, give somebody 500 bucks that has a track record of setting up websites like this to set up a basic website for you. Don't sit fiddle farting around worrying about is it exactly the right color of blue? Uh, is it okay if I have a hyphen in my domain name? If you are a site like this, where your main purpose of a website is just to have a track record and a way for people to find you, don't overthink it. You can always make it better later. You can always make it better later. But get these basics down. Stay away from GoDaddy for hosting. Do not use anybody's freaking site builder. One more time. Don't use anybody's freaking site builder. Not Wix, not any of that shit. They always have all this nickel and dime shit to keep uploading, you know, keep upping you in price and cost, etc. Get basic hosting, get WordPress installed on it, and literally anything you'll ever want to do on a site this size, including like taking online payments, etc. There's either free or cheap things called plugins. Boom, bam, bing, done. And if you can't figure it out, since it's WordPress and everything on WordPress runs with a, what's called a MySQL database and PHP programming. Every third person who has any idea how to do anything online with programming, development, integration, NoSQL, and, and, and PHP. And I would say it's probably two out of three people. Like you might have some guys that specialize in like Cold Fusion or Ruby on Rails or something like that. Freaking every programmer knows how to use WordPress. Every programmer knows how to code in PHP. Every programmer knows how to, to, to reach down into to like MySQL and, and, and code SQL databases. And you don't even have to anyway because everything is so, there's so much stuff for WordPress. You want a, a website that does all the shit Facebook does? They have a plugin for that. I can't remember what it's called now, but it's like a buddy press, right? And literally you can make your own mini Facebook like that. If you can do that and you're worried about, well, how do I take a deposit for materials in my handyman business? Pfft, easy. WooCommerce, boom, bang, boom, done. And there's even plugins to take, dare I say it, cryptocurrency. So WordPress, pay someone to do the basic setup, learn how to make blog posts, build a track record, don't use site builders, stay away from GoDaddy for hosting, stay away from Wix for hosting, don't do that shit. Buy a domain name that uses as close to what people would look for you as possible. Again, we're not trying to sell telecommunications services to the world. We're talking about local business. That's what I got for you this week. Hope you enjoyed this. And if you are, if you are hodling pirate chain, R, baby, R. Take care. I will be back with you next week.